In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful savior, we can never give enough thanks and praise to almighty God, Allah, who came in the person of master Farad Muhammad for raising up in our midst, his last and greatest messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. To Allah and his messenger, do we submit? As I greet my beloved brothers and sisters in the words of peace and paradise of Assalamu Alaikum. I would like to welcome and thank everyone for joining us uh, here at Muhammad's Sunday Lectures, which is uh, our live stream of lectures. Um, there's many things you could be doing today. You know, you can be out enjoying this beautiful day, whether it's sunny, whether it's raining, whether it's hot or cold, it's always a beautiful day to be above ground. So we thank you for joining us. And again, I would like to welcome you to Muhammad Sunday Lectures. I am your guest minister for today. My name is Minister Wali Muhammad out of Texas. Um, I come through Muhammad's Temple of Islam in San Antonio, Texas, uh, which the minister during that time was Minister Basir Muhammad. Uh, that was my minister that brought me into the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. May Allah be pleased with him. And may Allah also continue to bless and protect his family. Um, Brother Yusuf, Brother Minister Yusuf, and the rest of the family, we send the greetings to you believers there in San Antonio. Um, Minister Basir Muhammad, who was my teacher, was a direct student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he taught him for three and a half years, face to face. He lived with him. So he taught him as God taught him, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I'm very fortunate and very blessed to have met such a man, Minister Basir Muhammad, who was able to give me the teachings as it was given to him. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. These uh, Sunday lectures has been brought to you by the Nation of Islam. I would like to thank uh, many brothers uh, and sisters who have been uh, involved in making these things happen. I would like to give a special thanks to Brother Daniel Shabazz. Uh, he's in uh, Arizona and he's part of the uh, administrative team that's working behind the scenes to make this happen. So I'd like to send a special thank you to that brother and his family. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank all the uh, ministers who will be a part of this uh, series of lectures um, that will be presented to you. They will also appear as guest speakers as well. I would like to thank Minister Hawk Muhammad out of New York, Coney Island. Very instrumental part of this process. I would like to thank Minister Oscar Shahir out of Toledo, Ohio. He will also be a guest speaker. I would also like to thank Minister Rasul Hafiz out of Florida by way of New York. He's originally from New York, but he resides in Florida. And he's the son of Minister Hamza Hafiz, one of our 
great elders who walked alongside the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I also like to thank our brothers who have also been a part of building, helping to build our nation. Uh, Brother Captain Hassan Sharif out of Detroit. I also like to thank Brother Captain Shabe out of New York, out of, out of Atlanta by, by way of New York. That brother's by coastal. Uh, brother Captain Amuel, I want to thank that brother for his hard work. So many brothers. Brother Sharif Muhammad, I want to thank that brother for his dedication and contributing to what we're doing. Brother Secretary Rashid Shabazz. I'd like to thank him and send our condolences to him and his family for the recent passing of his sister. May Allah be pleased with her. I'd like to thank our treasurer, Brother Freddie X. Hood out of San Antonio, Texas. Very instrumental part of what we're doing. I know some other brothers uh, that I may have forgotten to mention, but we are continuing to grow and getting much support and helping to build this nation. So this is the first part of our Muhammad Sunday lectures series. And we pray to Allah that this be a much success and it be a useful tool to help spread the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad so that you can understand the purpose of these teachings and what it was designed for. So, These series that I will present to you will be based on the book called Message to the Black Man in America. This book is written by Elijah Muhammad. And this is the basis of what we are here to present to you in these lectures. It's a message for the black man in America and the black woman, primarily for the black man, but for the black woman and the rest of the world. It's important that you receive this message. Many of you may have read this book before. It's been promoted by a lot of famous people throughout history, such as Muhammad Ali, such as Malcolm X, such as Louis Farrakhan. So this is where I start my basis for my lectures. What inspired me to, to use this as a basis for my lectures, because there are many other subjects that I could have spoke on today, but I chose to teach from the message to the black man in America because my son, his name is Ishmael Rasul. He's gonna be 13 in a couple of weeks. And he just recently picked up this book and started reading. And he had become so immersed into the book and these chapters and these lessons that are taught in the book that he came to his mother and I and made profound statements as it related to what he was understanding on his own reading from the book. I won't get into those profound statements, but it was so profound that it 
surprised his mother and I as to how he responded to this book. So I chose to go into this book to teach from because we understand that this is from the messenger of God, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, who met face to face with God. So without any further delay, we'll go into, uh, into the lecture, which is an introduction to Islam as taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. The first thing you would want to ask yourself is what is Islam? Islam is the entire submission to the will of Allah, who is God. And the significance of Islam is the making of peace. This is what Islam signifies, peace. Peace is the dominant idea of Islam. Understand that. Peace is the dominant idea of Islam. And Islam can be, a, can be defined with one word, and that word is righteousness. Let's take a quick look at that word, righteousness. Allow me to write it on the board here. Righteousness. When you think of that word righteousness, you think of, you know, God, you think of holy, you think of being upright, and this is all true. But I want us to look at the base, the, the root of the word righteousness. The word right. My handwriting is, isn't the best, but I think it's leg legible. Right is the root word of righteousness. And what is it to be right? When you say Islam, one word defining Islam, which is righteousness, we're basically saying Islam is right. It is the right way. You know, for you to be righteous, you have to have the right thought of mind. You have to practice in the right way. You have to do the right thing. You have to say the right thing. You have to walk in the right way, the right path in order to be righteous and full of righteousness. You understand? So that is the significance of Islam. In Islam, the book that we present to you is the Holy Quran. Allah is the author of the Holy Quran. This Holy Quran I present to you, it says here on the cover, with English translation and commentary by Malena Muhammad Ali. What does this mean? This means that Malena Muhammad Ali translated the original text of this book, which is Arabic. He translated it into English for those of us who do not speak Arabic. And we Black people here in America, we do not speak Arabic, although Arabic is our original tongue, our original language. But that was stripped away from us during slavery, during the process of enslaving us. Those things had to be stripped away from us in order to make us slaves. Our original language, our original culture, our original way of life, the God that we worship, 
was stripped away from us. That's why during slavery, they separated the child away from the parents so that the parents could no longer teach the child of his culture. Our names were stripped away from us. When we were brought here to America, we were not called by the names that we go by today. We weren't called Johnson or Smith or Green or Jackson. None of these names. These names were placed on us, forced on us by our slave masters. Once we were sold to the slave master, we took on the slave master's name to show that we were the property of that slave master. So if we are a free people today, if we believe that we are a free people today, then why are we still walking around with the slave master's name? That shows ownership that you belong to that person. Think about it. Think about when a woman marries a man and when they get married, that woman takes on in most cases, because nowadays it's a little different. Women want to hold on to their independence by keeping their maiden name. So they may hyphenate it, you know, and I've even seen situations where the man took on the woman's last name, but in traditional marriage, I should say, the woman takes on the man's last name. And why? why? Why not the other way around? Because it shows that that woman belongs to that man. She has given herself to that man. And a lot of times it shows the father gives his daughter away to that man. Meaning that he has released possession because that daughter belonged to the father right but he's released possession of that daughter to her husband right so i don't want you to get confused to think that when we say possession it's not like slavery when you own someone belonging meaning you're giving yourself uh willingly just like when we say Islam is the entire submission to the will of God, this is something that you do willingly. Allah doesn't force you into submission. He has given man free will. Right? So when a woman gives herself to a man, she's doing that willingly. And she belongs to that man. And that's why she takes on that last name. So why are we still walking around here with the last names of the slave master if we're no longer his slave? I would like for you to think about that. All right? So we must give up those things to be free. Give up his name and reclaim our own. So the Holy Quran with English translation, meaning that it was translated from Arabic to English, and commentary, meaning that there's a section, but there's uh, sections in this book where the translator, Malena Muhammad Ali, makes commentary, give comments about what is read in the scriptures. Right. But the original text is still here in the book, Arabic. You have Arabic on one side and you have the translation English on the other side. Well, why is it necessary to keep the original text? Why not just translate it and leave out the original text? Like the, the Bible has, the, the, the writers of the Bible have done. They have removed the original text and give you, given you their translation. 
But what we fail to understand is that in translation, meaning can get lost because there are some words in Arabic that there's no English word for that defines the Arabic word to the fullest definition of that Arabic word. For example, we say Allah, that's Arabic, Allah. But the trans Eng English translation would be God. But the English translation word God doesn't have the full meaning or the full attribute as the word Allah. Allah has 99 attributes that defines it. Allah being the hundredth. Those 99 attributes, Allah possesses all those attributes. Whereas when you say God, it doesn't necessarily possess those types of attributes. God could be of a, of a lesser God. See? In the scriptures, it teaches us that, that, that there are many gods. Right? It teaches us that ye all are gods. This is from the Bible. It says ye are all gods. Children of the most high God. Right? So, we define the most high God as a law. And there's no English translation of a law that will give that name its fullest potential. All right? So I just wanted to be kind of use that as an example as to how meaning can get lost in translation. Right. So it's important that you have the original text for those of us who can uh, read and speak Arabic. And for those of you who may want to learn to read and speak Arabic, you can read the Arabic text and get a more profound understanding or meaning than the translation. All right. So it's important that Malena Muhammad Ali kept the original text here. And by doing so, that is what allows us to refer to this book as holy. If you get the a Quran that's completely in Arabic, then that is what we call holy. Because holy is something that hasn't been changed, altered, filtered it is of its original source so the holy quran is the words from allah himself not a third party nobody giving a testimony or an account of what they witness like the bible does right so a holy quran in Arabic is the word of God in its original text without being changed. That is a Holy Quran. So let me show you the difference between the Holy Quran and the Bible. Now, as a pretext, I want you to understand that we as Muslims, believe in Allah who is God and we believe in all of his prophets from Abraham to Jesus to Muhammad we believe in all the prophets of God when we talk about the Bible this Bible that I have here this is a King James version Listen to the words. 
King James Version, version of the Bible. Why do we have a King James Version? If we have a King James Version, that, that means that there must have been other versions of the Bible out there, right? What version is the right version? You understand? That's just as that's just like if we saw an accident happen, right? And the police go and ask one person, what happened? What did you see? What did you witness? And that person tells the officer his version, right? Of what he witnessed. And then he goes to another person and take their statement and ask them, what did they see? What did they witness? And then that person tells their version. In most cases, those versions would not be the same. There will be some differences in that version. But who, whose version is correct? Whose version is most accurate? Is King James version accurate? And if so, who says so? Who says that his version is correct? Why can't we just have the word from God instead of somebody giving the version of God's word? Why can't we just have God's word? Right? So we believe that the Bible has been changed and altered. As you see, it doesn't have its original text. It's been translated. And as I mentioned, meaning gets lost in translation. And meaning and truth also gets lost in versions, someone giving their versions. Because versions is usually uh, someone's perspective of what they saw. And perspectives change with people, right? So it has to take someone who was raised by God because there is some truth in here. There's truth in the Bible. And we believe that these scriptures were delivered by men of God, but man has changed and altered it to use it for his purpose of deceiving the people, right? So there is truth here, but it takes someone who has been divinely raised and taught by God himself to go into this book to bring out the truth. Only someone divinely raised by God. We have many men of intelligence and wisdom here out there in the world, men of understanding, who can bring out some truth of the scriptures. But in order to awaken the dead, which the Bible refers to as the resurrection. In order to awaken the dead, it takes one who has been divinely risen by God. You see, to bring out all truth, right? And this person that I'm referring to is none other than the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, messenger of God, right? In the Holy Quran, it teaches us that some of the verses of scripture, some are decisive, meaning that it means exactly what it's saying, pretty much. There's no room for interpretation if it, says that that's what it means no symbolism no hidden messages it's pretty direct right 
And then it also says that there are some scriptures that are allegorical. What does allegorical mean? Allegorical means that there is interpretation needed to bring out the true understanding of the scripture. And the Holy Quran says that men use the allegorical part to deceive people. That's what the devil has done and is doing. He's using the allegorical part of scripture to deceive us. But it takes one who's mighty in power and wisdom to raise up one to interpret those scriptures. That man has to be from God. He has to be taught from God because only Allah knows its interpretation. So do not accept an interpretation from anyone other than the one who was taught by God. And that's who we represent to you today. The one who was taught by God, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I wanted to give you an understanding that we, the nation of Islam, the students, the followers of the most honorable, honorable Elijah Muhammad, we believe in all the prophets of God and we believe in his scriptures. The scriptures in the Holy Quran, we believe in the Torah, which is the Old Testament. We believe in the New Testament or the angel. And we believe in the Holy Quran. But we know that the Bible has been tampered with. And men of understanding can bear witness to that. So Allah is God. Who is that mystery God? Allow me to read the chapter from the message to the black man, which is titled Allah is God. If you can follow along with me, who is that mystery God, mystery God part one for thousands of years, the people who did not have the knowledge of the person or reality of God worship their own ideas of God. Right. He has been made like many things other than what he really is. The Christians refer to God as a mystery and as a spirit. And they divide him into thirds. One part they call the father. Another part, the son. And the third part they call the Holy Ghost which makes the three one, All right? Here I want you to see the imagery because imagery plays a big part in religion and in belief. They call those three parts, the Trinity. As you see in this imagery, you have the father, which is the image of a man but they say he's not a man. He's not a human being, I should say. He is a spirit or a mystery, unknown, because that's what mystery means, unknown. And then you have the son who is a man, Jesus, who they say, the Christians, that the father impregnated a virgin woman, Mary, to bring forth this 
human son, Jesus, the son of God. And then you have the Holy Ghost. Because they use this imagery as the Holy Ghost, but they say that the Holy Ghost cannot be seen, only felt. And they say that these three are one. That just doesn't add up mathematically. That the three are one. So this is what they teach us. And this is what they expect for us to believe into this trinity of God the Father being somewhere beyond the sky in a place called heaven that no one has witnessed. No one has died and went to this place and came back to tell us about it. All right? This is a place that they tell us where when you die, if you've been good, you get to go to heaven with God. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, what, what business would a spirit want to have with humans? All right? Think about that. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that God is not a spirit and that God is not a mystery. Because again, mystery means unknown, right? So if God is not a spirit and God is not a mystery unknown, he He's not unknown today, but he has been unknown for a very, very long time. But now he's being revealed to you through the most, the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We are the first black people here in America. We are the first to learn the reality of God in over the past millions of years. The reality of God was kept a secret for over millions of years. We are just now coming into the reality of God. And we are the first ones to get this knowledge in order to teach the rest of the world. This knowledge is a superior knowledge, so much so, much so that it has elevated us those who have accepted these teachings and has accepted Allah who came in the person of master Farah Muhammad and we have accepted his messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. This truth has raised us from the bottom of civilization to the top as leaders leading you into a new way of life, leading you back into the essence from which you came so that you can know who you are. Knowledge of self. This is the first thing you must have to be resurrected because without knowledge of self, then you are considered mentally dead, mentally dead because you have lost the knowledge of yourself, spiritually dead because you do not know who your God is that you're worshiping a false God or a mystery God. Right? Mentally, dumb, deaf, and blind to the knowledge of self, God, and the devil. You can see it in our ways and actions. Even those of us who profess Christianity you see it in our ways and actions, in our character, in our behavior. We have made evil fair seeming because the world that we live in embraces it, right? It embraces these 
evil and wicked ways. And if anybody stands up to speak the truth against falsehood, they are, they are attacked. Just as the prophets of God were attacked when they came forth speaking the word of God, the people wanted to kill them. They wanted to get rid of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad because he was teaching the truth. And he was cleaning up the black man and woman in America. The world has never witnessed anything like that before. To look at these people who were brought down to our lowest state, being uh, uncivilized and a savage people. That's what slavery did to us. It made us a savage people. But if you look at the believers and followers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, you will see that we are no longer savage. We are the most civilized people on the planet of the earth. In all that we do. Because we had a leader and a teacher who taught us in the way of civilization that the world has not known. The right foods to eat. The true knowledge of God and self. How to be upright and righteous. To be right. And you see that has changed in our presentation we're no longer the ex-slaves or, or or the 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 people that the white man has made through slavery we are now the people that god has made and the world can bear witness to that so the honorable Elijah muhammad teaches us that god is not a mystery he's no he's not a spirit if he's not a mystery, he's not a spirit, then who is God? What is God? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that God is man and man is God. God is man and man is God. Let me read here and I would like for you to follow along with what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad says in chapter three of the message to the black man. Is God a spirit or a man? God is a man and we just cannot make him other than man, least we make him an inferior one. For man's intelligence has no equal in other than man. His wisdom is infinite capable of accomplishing anything that his brain can conceive. A spirit is subjected to us and not we to the spirit. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that we cannot make anything other than man, God, unless we make him an inferior one. Think about it. People all over the world throughout history of time have worshiped many things. They worship statues. They worship animals. They worship the sun, the moon, the stars. But none of these things is superior to man. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us it is because of man's intelligence. In order to be intelligent, you must have a brain, right? Intelligence comes from a brain, right? So statues don't have brains. The sun, the moon, and the stars don't have brains. And these other creatures, other than man, their brains is not as superior as man. 
So if you have a God that is superior to man, then we ask to you, show us your God. We don't want to hear about your mystery, God, that you cannot bring forth to bear witness to us. We can bring you man. I'm, I am a man. And I have intelligence. I'm not the most intelligent man. The most intelligent man is the supreme man who we refer to as the supreme God, Allah, right? But the scriptures teaches us, it says ye are all gods, right? In the Bible, not the Holy Quran, it says that in the Bible, it says ye are all gods. So am I lying? I'm not telling the truth when I say that man is God because it's referring to man. It says ye are all gods, but it says ye are children to the most high God. That means that there's a God that's superior over all the other gods. There's a man that's superior over all other men. And what makes him superior? He's superior in the way of knowledge wisdom and understanding and force and power that was that is what makes him superior so we need to understand that i would like to go a little further into the message to the black man before i reach my closing and i want to thank you all for your time and attention for allowing me to share this knowledge with you all. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad says in the message to the black man, and this is very important, please pay it all your attention. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad says, the worst thing to ever happen to the devil, think about this, the worst thing to ever happen to the devil. Can you guess what that is? The worst thing to ever happen to the devil is the truth of them being made manifest that they are really the devils whom the righteous, all members of the black nation, should shun and never accept as truthful guides of God. Right? This is why the devils have always persecuted and killed the righteous. By the time, but the time has at last arrived that Allah, God, will put an end to their persecution and killing of the righteous, the black nation. This is what we're still witnessing today. He is still killing our black men, women, and children every day. We see it on, on the news, shooting us outright in the back but little to no consequence. They throw us a bone every now and again with something that resembles justice, but that's not true justice, right? It's not true justice when one black man has, uh, uh, has become financially wealthy and the rest of us is still poor and out of luck. That's not justice for us as a nation. So, The worst thing to happen to the devil is that he is made known because he has kept him, he has kept himself a secret. Just as the knowledge of God was kept a secret, the devil kept himself a secret. He gave another image of a, of a devil that he wanted you to believe. He told you that the devil was also a spirit, right? You know how when people do evil things, they say he or she must be possessed with the devil. Like the devil, the spirit of the devil just jumps in you and you start doing bad things. You start doing evil things. 
And this is what you believe. You believe that when you die, if you've been bad all of your life, you haven't been righteous or right, you've been wicked and wrong, you know? And you think that when you die, that you're not gonna go to heaven where God is, you're gonna go to hell where the devil is, somewhere beneath the earth, right? Because heaven's supposed to be in the sky. So hell is down low, somewhere in the earth. This is what you believe. And this is what they teach you. But we beg to differ. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we should shun him and never accept as truthful guys of God. The devil is amongst us. If God is a man, then what do you believe the devil is? He must be a man too, right? But he's the opposite. He's not right or righteous. He's evil and wicked. And if the devil is a man, then what man, what nation or people of man have displayed the most wickedest characteristics and traits on this planet that the world has ever known? Who? Black man and woman America? I know you know the answer. We know the answer. But we fear him. We fear the devil because we don't know God. Once you know God and self, then that fear will be removed because you will begin to know the devil. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the worst thing that can happen to the devil is the truth of them being made manifest. If you know that he's the devil, then he can no longer deceive you, right? If you know a person is a thief, you're not gonna invite them in your home around your possessions, right? If you know a person is a liar, you're not gonna be so willing to trust what they say, right? So they're not gonna no longer be able to deceive you because you are because they have been made manifest to you. Think about that person in your life. They can be black or white to where you gave them trust. Right? And the moment that they deceive you, that changed your perspective of them, your perspective of them. You no longer dealt with them in the same manner anymore. Right? So this is the same way with the devil. When the truth is revealed and it makes manifest of God and it makes manifest of the devil, then you have the truth. You now can be held accountable for your choices, for your ways and actions. Meaning that you can now be judged. We are living in the day of judgment because the truth has been made known. Praise be to Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Praise be to Allah for Allah himself who came in the person of Master Fra Muhammad. And we thank him for raising up the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So, I'm almost to my conclusion to kind of tie it all in together. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, the message to the black man in America, it's a very powerful book. It's a book that every black person in America who descend from uh, slavery, who are descendants from slavery should have and own. You know, when we 
went through slavery and then we were so-called free. There was no rehabilitation for us. There was no counseling, no therapy. You know, when, when people, soldiers go to war and they come back, they are, what they call, uh, can't think of the word for it, but they go through a process that kind of get them back into normal society. You know what I'm saying? They go through this type of briefing to help with the PTSD, post-traumatic distress or something of that nature, because they have been traumatized by what they experienced in war. So as we black people in America who had went through slavery, we have been traumatized by going through that experience. Even us today, who didn't go through the actual physical lynching and the bondage, the physical bondage, we are still affected by that. Right? We are still traumatized by that. See? And we still go through some aspect of slavery today. We are not truly free. See? So this book, The Message to the Black Man, helps us with that trauma. Helps us regain what we've lost. Helps to elevate us to a higher plane of existence from being the low man on the totem pole to putting us at the top. We thank a lot for that. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, the American so-called Negro are gravely deceived by their slave masters teaching of God and the true religion of God, right? They do not know that they are deceived. Think about that. We do not know that we are deceived. And that's the hardest person to convince of the truth because they don't know that they're deceived. They do not know that they are deceived and do earnestly believe that they are taught right regardless of how evil the white race may be, not knowing self or anyone else, they are a prey in the hands of the white race. We have been and still is a prey to the white race, the world's arch deceivers, the real devils in person. Huh? You are made to believe that you worship the true God, but you do not. And he's talking to our brothers and sisters who have followed the, the devil, have followed him in his, into his way of belief. God is unknown to you in that which the white race teaches you a mystery God. God is unknown to you. Oh, it's, it's the most honorable, honorable Elijah Muhammad has told us many times how hard headed and stiff necked we are as a people. We are the most rebellious people on the earth that we would not even accept anything that is good for us for sake of the slave master. And lastly, brothers and sisters, lastly, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, before I conclude, the belief in a God other than man, a spirit, Allah has taught me, goes back into the millions of years. Long before Yakub, the father of the devils, because the knowledge of God was kept as a secret from the public. 
This is the first time that it has ever been revealed. And we, the poor, rejected, and despised people, are blessed to be the first of all the people of the earth to receive this secret knowledge of God. That's what I was just mentioning to you. He said it right there. That we are blessed to be the first to receive this knowledge of God. So we thank Allah. And we thank him for his messenger. Most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So as I conclude, brothers and sisters, I beg you to pay all of your mind and all of your attention. Whether you are a Christian or an atheist, whatever you believe or proclaim, we want you to measure it to the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We know that you're not going to put down, you know, your, your belief, what you've been taught, not, not overnight. For those of you that, that do praise be to Allah, praise be to Allah. But we know our people. We know how rebellious we are. We know that you don't want anything good for yourself unless it can be shared with others. This is specifically for you, black man and woman. You have been the one down in the mud. You have been the one stripped of all things that is good for you. Just like when our people stood up and said, black lives matter. Right. They couldn't just let us have that. No, they wanted to say blue lives matter. Blue lives matter. They want to say white li lives matter. But they understood what they were saying. But our people, black people, we didn't understand. We had to go along with what they were saying. Yes. All lives matter, but you didn't understand the true, the true meaning behind saying black lives matter is because the black life was being treated as if it didn't matter. No other lives was being treated as if it didn't matter. Not the blue lives, not the white lives, not the Asian lives, not the gay lives. You understand what I'm saying? We were screaming Black Lives Matter because it apparently didn't by the way the world was treating us. But everyone else knew what they was doing when they was trying to say all these other things mattered as well. They was trying to overshadow your cry, your plea for Black Lives to matter. Drown you out to where you couldn't be heard. Your cry could not be heard because they wanted to drown it out. So let's not allow the enemies of God drown out what Allah has given to you, which is freedom, justice, and equality. Islam, your true way of life, the way of life of your ancestors, the nature in which God created life, because everything in life submits to the will of God, except for the devil. He was made to be opposite. So, I conclude my brothers and sisters and I ask that you continue to tune in so that we can go further. This was just the tip of the iceberg, brothers and sisters. We got so much more to cover in this book and, and it gets deeper. The rabbit hole gets deeper. So I thank you brothers 
and sisters for your time and attention as I greet you in the words of peace and paradise of Assalamu alaikum.